Hi, my name's Jason Debley, and tonight's review is, whoops, don't want to knock over the whiskey glass. This is not tea bag. It's a blended scotch whiskey called Che Vec. Kind of like Che Guevara, Che Vec. It's not, uh, not nothing to do with the Cuban Revolution. It's a blended scotch whiskey that is 40% uh, malt uh, whiskey with 60% uh, naturally uh, grain whiskey. Uh, the company that owns this is a small independent whiskey company on the Isle of Skye. And uh, the company that owns it uh, is was founded in 1976 by a rich merchant banker that wanted to bring work to the Isle of Skye, which is a pretty economically challenged place. Now, I just had a long day at work. In fact, I've had a long three weeks at work. I uh, worked every weekend for the past three weeks. My wife and two children got on a plane and went to Jamaica, leaving me behind. I and my older daughter are going to go to Mexico. Uh, but tonight I'm alone, and I was driving away from the airport, and I thought, you know, I think I'll go to the liquor store and just get a comfort whiskey to uh, maybe sit by the fire and have a drink and read a book. Really, I'm going to do that tonight. And it's, it's bitter cold out, so I go to the liquor store not knowing what I'm going to have, but I just wanted something I've had before that's comfortable and is good and not going to cost me a lot of money. In the past, I've really liked this blended scotch. And it's, uh, Chavec is not widely available in the United States, unfortunately. And I think it's because it's such a small company that they don't have the big distribution arm that uh, big multinational whiskey companies have. Price-wise, it was pretty good. In Canada, I paid $35 or $36. Uh, I think it's $36 to $40 in the U.S. Not sure about uh, the U.K. I think £25, but that's a little rich in Canadian dollars. And I haven't opened this bottle. I haven't had this bottle in a couple of years, about five years. So I thought I'd go back and try it. And there's nothing more exciting than just kind of opening a bottle for the first time. It's always exciting. And kind of like that first kiss, first job. Don't you just love that sound? Oh, yeah, you can do that with uh, wine. Nice little cork. This is 40% alcohol by volume, and it's non-chill filtered. And you're probably thinking, chill filtration, what is that? Some of you may not know. I've gotten a bit of email on chill filtration. And basically, chill filtration is a process that uh, the blenders will do, or even single malt producers will do. There's a process, a step, where there's fatty acid esters in the spirit that are removed in order to, um, for cosmetic reasons, purely. Uh, some blended whiskeys and single malts, if you add water to them or ice, they, uh, they'll cloud up a bit on you. And uh, the consumer might think there's something wrong with that. So the big whiskey companies do a chill filtration process. This whiskey is not chill filtered. So if you add a little bit of water, gonna get a little bit cloudy. That doesn't mean it's bad whiskey. Uh, it, I couldn't find anything on the internet about whether it's been artificially colored. The whiskey is kind of golden, and uh, it's kind of dark, you know, it's, it's not a light colored whiskey. And what uh, producers of whiskey do, and people who market it, they'll darken the color because it'll imply that the spirit spent more time in the cask and therefore is higher quality. I think in today's marketplace, consumers, color isn't so important. But uh, I don't think this is artificially colored with a E150 caramel. Now, what else? I'm going to take out these cell phones. They're bugging me. That's a work one. That's a personal one. Ugh. I feel like I'm in the mafia. Anyway, let's try this. So the nose is oily. It's peated. It's definitely peated. It's a peaty, um, you know, this company that produces this is on the Isle of Skye. There's another distillery on the Isle of Skye that you probably know, Talisker. 
and I'm just wondering if there's a bit of talisker in here, and I think there is. The nose is nice. It's peaty, it's, it's earthen, maybe a little bit of seaweed and brine. I'm liking it. The palate is thick. You can taste some sherry. It's got some malt. Black licorice. Deep, dark Virginia tobacco. Kind of like a lucky strike unfiltered. We don't ever want to smoke those, but if we did, it would taste like that. And, there, and there's some peat on the, um, on the palate. Like you taste peat, you taste malt, sherry, black licorice, black coffee. It is good. This is really good, fresh out of the bottle. Cranberry. Now, let's examine the finish. You know, the, the flavors you're left with after the whiskey is gone. mackerel, uh, there's some fish notes, Thai sauce, fish sauce, prunes, definitely smoke, definitely salty, now I, I taste a bit of red licorice. This is not disappointing. You know, for $35, $35 to $40 in Canada, this is very good value for money. Uh, it would compete with black grouse, it's better than black grouse. It would compete with, uh, in the U.S., some blends that are not available in Canada. I don't know about Black Bottle. Black Bottle's really changed its flavor profile and is quite a bit te uh, cheaper. Teacher's Highland Cream is a fair bit cheaper, but uh, this is better than Teacher's Highland Cream. Alcohol by volume is 40%. The age of the component whiskeys in this blend are purportedly 5 to 11 years. There's no age statement, of course. And um, doesn't taste cheap, doesn't taste grainy, uh, there's no bite, it's smooth, it's textured, it's good. I think there might be some Talisker in here. Maybe another Isla uh, malt in here too. Definitely some Highland whiskey. It's got a nice finish of uh, a tingling uh, menthol spearmint peat note. This is very good. So, Chavec, not tea bag, Chavec. Blended Scotch whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume, 40% malt, good value for money. I encourage you to buy it. Cheers. Mm.